Hello, I am the Ronin Vaughn, and this is Nation States. Welcome back to it. Our enormous socially minded government is juggling the competing demands of welfare, healthcare, and education, meeting to discuss matters of state in the capital city of Slushfundia. Slushfundia. The average income tax rate is 76.2 and even higher for the wealthy, yes. Keep them poor, we've got issues on the docket. This way's kinder. What, what, hail to you! Hail, leader! Oh, I love this issue already! Patriotism and love for your government is naturally on the rise. <clears throat> and one of your closest advisors has suggested to you that Pawantucky forms a youth organization to teach the next generation to love you as much as this one does. Oh, we don't have to teach him. I'm just so lovable. I'm like... I'm like a hamburger-toting clown wearing yellow and red str- That guy is creepy, what the hell? Don't compare me to him. Think about it, says sycophantic party coordinator client insufficient. Clint insufficient, oh that's a name! With remnants of silly string and party streamers on his dress uniform suggesting he has perhaps misunderstood his job title. He stands by you on the palace balcony. We've got a palace! We've moved into a palace, we're doing very well. Gesturing to indicate a group of serious looking children saluting a giant flag. The patriotism in these kids is admirable. Give them an official youth organization in the name of our righteous ideology and call it the Children of Leader. What's that symbol? Oh, that's the mouse. Teach them to sing songs, to swear allegiance to the flag, to camp in the wilderness, maybe how to clean and shoot a rifle. Who knows what a group of wonderfully fit patriotic boys could come in handy. Oh, you're planning for tomorrow, aren't you? When the rich rise up against me. I, I'm not going to discredit this. Obviously, managing the nation's youth is sensible, but training and arming them sounds a little incautious, suggests security director Mike Ford. Teach them to obey, for sure, but put them to work doing socially useful tasks instead. Road building, stone breaking, window cleaning, that sort of thing. It's basically a child prison camp. Oh, no, that, he didn't say that. Childish high spirits are something to be broken, not encouraged. Jeez, I was wondering where your namesake come, came from, Mike Ford. I think I know. Your dad. Didn't he make tanks for Hitler? What have the schools been teaching my son? Yells angry mother Jane McCarthy as she drags her spotty teenage sprog into your office. Okay, listen. A lot of people suffer from acne. You don't have to call him a spotted teenage sprog. And what the hell is a sprog? As your guards attempt to remove her, she employs some impressive jujitsu to send them flying. Oh, get this woman on the staff. He has turned into an obsessed robot with more respect for leader than for his own parents. I will not let my son join an organization for brainwashed punks. I will not let you do this to anybody's children. We, the people, say no to state-directed youth organizations. Oh, you make an impressive case. Not so much with your words as with the jujitsu. The tricky issue, isn't it? I have to sort of vote against my own interests here if I want to do the right thing because, I mean, it would be great to have all the children just praising my name and, you know, sewing my visage into the flag, that sort of thing. I don't know, what do you do in, in summer camp? This probably something to do with macaroni in the shape of my eyebrows. I also feel rather threatened by this woman over here. I Just take your jujitsu out of my office. Cub Scouts are being asked to hand in their woggles as the state withdraws funding for scouting. What? That wasn't even mentioned? That wasn't what I... International observers applaud rising political freedom in Pawtucky. Government official found my wallet. Added cash, local man says. Yes, Pawtucky, more chill than ever before, dude. We are like so totally just do your own thing. Tourism industry always bracing for influx. What, what to see the crumbling buildings? Why did you put that image next to the... <clears throat> uh, postcards from Pawtucky. Popular uprising. Defend the right to protest. I just, I just told them not to brainwash the children. That's not defending the right. Okay, I guess in the long run. Oh, huge loss to authoritarianism. Our Stalins are way down. And I'm not sure how to feel about that because, you know, on the larger scale, it sounds like a good thing, but when you're the dictator, ugh, not necessarily. Arms industry demands respect. Well, maybe I can get my Stalins back here if I make a couple of nukes. Representatives of Pawtucky's arms manufacturing industry have expressed outrage over the lack of public and private support for their sector. Interviewed by the industry's trade journal, Our Weapons, Your Victory, the CEO of Pawtucky Arms Incorporated, Bjork Silva, oh my god, I love your music. I love your music. Venus as a boy, Venus as a boy. I don't know how you, you make those noises with your throat, but I love them, keep doing it. 
It is shameful the way we have been treated over the last few years. Shameful. Our workers, and I tell you, we have a great many of them, can barely get to work thanks to disruption by protesters and all that hippie nonsense. And as for this dangerous talk of ethical trade practices, I say we need full government recognition of our, our vital contribution to the economy. Relaxation of trade barriers, gun laws, and crack down on all those long-haired weirdos who try to shut us down. So you're just, you're trying to make more, more arms in your private industry and you want, and then, okay, I think you know how this is gonna go. We have a right to protest against this evil business, screams Gary Bell through a megaphone. The arms manufacturing industry is a stain on our nation's character and must be removed. How can we make money from the production of these evil weapons? How can we stand by and profit from the blah 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 spilled by these abominations? The government must take a stand and outlaw the whole sect. Whoa. Okay, so no, no arms manufacturing whatsoever. Uh, I, I mean, we won in Brazilistan, but truly they're not the last. Your Minister of Trade advises taking a middle ground. We can't ban arms sales without harming the quality of our military and police departments. Clearly, not to mention the economy. Yeah, that too. These hippies do have a point though. Guns are terrible things in the wrong hands. We should implement additional safety checks on the groups to which the weapons get sold. Sensible. <clears throat> that way we don't lose too many sales, and the people are persuaded we are making a stand against nations who use the weapons for immoral ends. Yeah, that's good marketing, isn't it? <clears throat> the arms industry gets to sell their guns, and the protesters get to protest. Everybody wins, and nobody is completely happy. That's, that's how you run a, a nation, as far as I know. I mean, I live in America, that's how we do it. The arms industry is strictly regulated. Pawantuckian economy fell from weak to fragile. We're making more money, because of guns. It's... It's a hell of an industry. Sausage gate deaths preventable, coroner rules. I'm just hoping that refers to actual sausages and it's not an innuendo. Clothing retailers look forward to bumper season. Accountants in demand as taxation code grows more complex. International observers applaud rising political freedom in Pawantucky. Oh God, is our tax code getting, are you kidding me? The standard is just everybody pays 73% unless you're rich and then just give me all you months. Who is confused by that system? All your money or not quite all your money? Wow, there is a lot of, a lot of things changed when I did that. Lifespan went down, employment rate went down, recreational drug use went down, everything's getting worse. Yeah, because recreational drug use, that's a good thing. Our economy fell? You just said it went better, it's 21 points, just what are you doing? Industry arms manufacturing fell by 39.2, oh god. You're confusing me now. Just take me to the next issue, it's gotta be simpler than that. Cannibals demand to taste what Pawntucky has to offer. No bones about it, no bones, wait, that could be linked somehow. A group of religious fanatics have broken into the Slush Fundia Natural History Museum and destroyed a 75 million year old Gorgosaurus skeleton, the only one of its kind in Pawntucky. Well, that doesn't interest me at all. Those maniacs, they blew it up. They blew it all up. Damn those dirty apes. Wales Dr. Alana Grant, pop paleontologist, sucking all of the blood from her head as she shrieks it. Pop paleontologist and author of the dubiously researched Tyrannosaurs of the Jurassic, falling to her knees in horror. Skeletons like this one provide rare and valuable insight about the history of life on our planet. We must do everything we can to stop these fuels. The fuels? Well, they are, you know, you can turn them into oil. From destroying important scientific artifacts, fortify and defend our museums by violent means if necessary. Not often that in like two sentences you get um, Charlton Heston and uh, Will Shatner out of me. Also like three other people who I don't even know who they are. And God, it's getting crowded up here. Dr. Maurice Zayas, Dr. Zayas, Dr. Zayas, self-proclaimed defender of the faith, slams his religion's holy scrolls down on your desk, smashing your collection of rare amana, uh, uh, ammonites, ammonides, um, ammonias. We, it's just cleaning supplies. These devout believers were doing the work of the divine. These demon lizards are fakes from the depths of damnation. God put them there to trick us into believing that Something was, well, why are we following this god if he's trying to trick us? Let's just get a new one. They're fabrications to promote the ungodly theory that I call evolution. We should shut down these houses of lies that call themselves museums and instead create temples that teach only holy truth. 
Six Semper Tyrannosaurus. Oh, you were close. I thought that was, you were talking about me, but all right. Thus always unto dinosaurs. Good, we've got your opinion in. Mathematician Pablo Carpenter wearing a hashtag not all priests t-shirt has the decency to look embarrassed by the previous speaker. <laughs> Good on ya. I'm thinking the underlying problem here is that followers of science and religion are always taught to be adversarial to each other. Oh my god, Pablo Carpenter. You, you, you have my love. Couldn't we address that instead with government-sponsored faith academies reconciling the scientific method with theological debate? Many of the greatest advancements were historically made by faith-led nations. Shall we see if we can join them? Oh, oh god, Pablo. A man after my own soul, which doesn't exist, but it's real, but it's not. It's confusing, but it's real, but it's not. There's no reason to listen to Victoria Hoskins say, this raises an interesting point. I hear these dinosaurs were gigantic killer monsters that ate flesh and struck fear into all who opposed them. Forget the bones of the past, you should be resurrecting those beasts to attack the enemies of Pontucky. Imagine a pack of hungry velociraptors tearing apart your terrified foes. We could have used velociraptors in Brazilistan. Oh, if Pablo weren't here, I so would have gone with that. Imagine riding into battle against your enemies on the back of a, uh, Tarant, no, not Tyrannosaurus. What was my favorite? It was Triceratops. Yeah, riding in as a Triceratops, because they were cute and also deadly. How I, how I model myself. Pablo, we are so totally going to reunite the sciences and religion because both of them are just like, you're both acting stupid because you just hate each other so much you refuse to acknowledge what the truths that both sides are holding. Wake up, people! You think I can't read your mind? I can read your mind, baby. I can travel through time. I can see the future. And all of that is supported by science. You'll just stop assuming it's all woo. It's not all woo. Some of it's woo. Not all of it is woo. Children as young as eight can present logical proofs for the existence of the afterlife. Good for them. Economic growth exceeds forecast. Plague of locusts discovered to be just fog. International body praises Pawntuckian development and city planners consider 14-sided roundabout. Again, that's, uh, that's a lot of, that's a lot of roads coalescing at once and no one understands just a three-sided roundabout where I come from. I cannot go on unless we address this and I'll probably have to cut all this from the video. Please don't go on, but how often do you get to talk about this? That science and atheism in general has pulled back from religion, and it's very worthy. You know, I understand why you've done it, but you pulled back so much that you're now acting like religious zealots. And anytime that I bring up something that is scientifically supported, but sounds a little bit woo, <laughs> sounds like the kind of thing that a pastor might have inferred at some point in your life, you just like, no, no, not happening. That's not the way it works. This lump of fat and molecules and cells was generated naturally in nature and it blows your CPU out of the water. I am sitting here as a human being and processing so much incoming data right now. I have no idea its full extent. I am smelling things and hearing things and seeing things and tasting things and many, many other sensory organs that we don't usually mention. All of that is coming in at once and then creating an image of reality around me, creating not so much an image, but a feeling of reality. Everything that you experience is only a version of what might really be happening if you decide to believe that there is an objective world outside yourself because the difference between being awake and dreaming is only in the continuity. And I'm not saying that everything that you believe to be real is not real, that we're in the matrix, that this is all just a complex illusion. I'm just saying that what you see is not real and we're in the matrix and all of this is just a complex illusion. Because religion has been so anti-science for so many years and stood in the face of things that were absolutely evident and proven, now the people who were once smart enough to prove those things are acting like the religious zealots and denying their own discoveries because they smell like religion. Quit doing that. You're making yourselves look stupid. And now on to far more relevant issues. Cannibals demand to taste what Pontucky has to offer. A coalition of tribalist health experts and civil rights proponents have recently suggested legalizing cannibalism for consumers of willing would-be meals. What? 
I see absolutely no problem with people digging into each other at dinner time, so long as everyone is willing. Nelson Jefferson, the editor of the monthly magazine To Serve Man, quips. Not only does it solve hunger problems and create jobs, but it also adds variety to Pawtucky's sometimes dull palate. We eat house mice, mice kebabs, man. Even if I let you eat people, you know you're just gonna cover it in salt and ketchup. Civil rights leader Tamara Quagmire came out publicly for moderate pro-capital, moderate pro-cannibalism? Is there such a thing as a moderate position on cannibalism? Commenting, well, it may strike some as a crude, even evil practice. Our ancestors have practiced cannibalism for years. If we create a government organization to strictly regulate and grade all human meat prior to its arrival on the market, oh, this could only go well, we could ensure that respect for diversity is maintained while health concerns are also allayed. And instead of killing average people, why not make being turned into snack foods a post-mortem option? Like donating your body to science. Yes! Instead of, you know, taking your organs and making sure that someone else can live, let's just make Human popsicles! Why didn't I think of this? You're all absolutely out of your minds, exclaims Bjork Wolf. Thank you, welcome back. Bjork, sing me a song. Head of Pawtucky's largest health food manufacturer. It's immoral, it's unhealthy, and it's disgusting. Not only are these so-called dietary rights activists leading us down a dark path of sin, Okay, but don't just recoil from religion, but right into a marketplace with yet another product that's almost as bad as beef. That's, that's actually, I hadn't considered that. It's probably not the healthiest thing. I mean, even if you take out the, the whole human side of it, it's still like fatty meat. And probably, and more fat actually, the way, the way Pawntucky uh, is looking these days. What, what's, what's the average weight? Indeed, they're out of their minds, send them home. There has been a series of riots between local cannibals and health food advocates. That's fine, I don't want local cannibals at all. Financial planners advise more retirement planning. Yeah, because you won't be eaten. Family groups support drug crackdown. You won't be eaten. Family groups applaud return of decency because we're not eating each other. Clothing retailers look forward to bumper season because more people need clothing, primarily because... <clears throat> and postcards from Pawtucky, we have a high density culture showing appreciation for the finer things. Does that mean we've got more, more people because <clears throat> we're not eating them? God. Jim was tasty. Mmm. Mmm. Compulsory organ harvesting proposed. Oh, here we go. What, what, what is it? Comes in waves, doesn't it? We should eat people. And then when I say no, they say, well, let's at least scoop their organs out against their will. Tempers flare in Pawntucky as civil libertarians and the healthcare lobby clash once again over mandatory post-mortem organ donation. It's not as crazy as it sounds, says Dr. Wesley Wayne. Every day, people die because we don't have the organs to save them. Well, that and widespread underfunding for the health system. We're in Pawntucky, sir. Our health system is funded. 76% of your income goes to it. And if you're a doctor, probably more, because you're probably making more. <laughs> but the point is, if the government allowed us to take organs from dead people, we could save hundreds of lives a year. And come on, it's not like dead people need them. Hundreds? Really? Don't we have a population of... Let's think more. You keep your damn hands off my organs, says alarmed hospital patient Bruce Dawson. They are my organs and I'll do with them what I like. The government has no right to my body. Oh God, I am going to step on a landmine no matter what I say. Yeah, I'll tell you what, you guys figure this one out for yourself. I'm going to get a coffee. Pawn out. <laughs>